October the 1st, 2019. Guys, last night, a lot of folks asked me to do another Bible study, and this has been on my mind uh, quite a bit lately. Let me say this. Um, we're looking at Matthew 24, King James Version, and this is the East Sword software that I linked last night. It's completely free. It will let you search out any word in the Bible. You can uh, use the Greek and Hebrew translations that's in the Strong's Concordance that will come in on this. It's all just a click on the tools, guys, and it's a whole new wealth of information. And the search alone for any word or phrase in the Bible is tremendous. Uh, it's a tremendous tool. And in the Bible, a lot of things are repeated a lot, many times, three times for emphasis. And we're, you're looking at Matthew 24, 1, King James. And this message was repeated three times for you guys taking notes. It's uh, in Matthew 24, it's in Luke 21, and it's in Mark 13. The same story, three times for emphasis. Now, I'm going to use Matthew in this particular um, message, if you want to put it like that. But guys, what's happening is, you know, you're, you are just like I am. One of the main questions that we have, if you think about it, is what are the signs of the end times? I mean, are, are we looking at a catastrophic uh, asteroid impact? Are we looking at war, uh, solar flares, knocking out the power, whatever? What are the signs? And Christ very simply answered that question here. Now, if you dig a little bit deeper, some of these uh, answers that he uh, gives to these disciples that are asking about the end times may surprise you. Maybe it won't. But let me go through this. And Jesus had come out of the temple. It says, Jesus went out, departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple. They said, Lord, look at this magnificent temple. And Jesus said, and notice that uh, this particular chapter has a lot of words in red. Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. We know that um, the uh, temple area will be trodden. It's been uh, been torn down many times, but in the end times, you've got this three and a half year period. But guys, here's what, uh, when we get deep into this, and he sat upon the Mount of Olives, which is, guys, at that time, you know, you had two mountains. One the temple was on, you go down the little creek and go up on the hill on the other side and on the Mount of Olives, and that's where they were at. And he, as he sat upon this Mount of Olives, the, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, wasn't a big group, wasn't a large crowd, tell us. And he's telling all of us now, when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Now, guys, don't stop listening to this video now because I know this sounds familiar. You've heard it all before, right? Just keep listening. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. We talked about that in the video last night. For many, many, shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many, because people are looking for a man to save them. And we were told, was it in the book of Timothy? There is, there, no man can intercede. You don't need that. You don't need it, regardless of what preachers tell you or what major churches around the planet tell you. It's between you and Christ. There is no intercessor. You, it's between you and him. For you, he said, um, for you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, and guys, we are. See that you not, or be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And guys, this is related through history, not just biblical history, but the wars of the end times all the way to Albert Pike. And where did they get their information from? You know where it came from. They understand scripture, and they're trying to fight it. It says, For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines. Famines, guys. Think about that. What was the first thing that Satan tempted Christ with? 
during that time, the 40 days in the desert, what was the first thing? Bread. Bread. Think about it. Famines. And when we talk about the other worldviews and the chaos that can be involved with that, um, famines would do it. That would start a very big problem because it would start a food war across the planet. Pestilence and earthquakes in many places. We know that can happen very easily and very quickly. All of these are the beginnings of sorrow. Think about that. That's not the end of it. It's the beginning. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Think about that. And many false prophets shall rise and shall de deceive many and because of iniquity, which is sin, it shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. Guys, think about this in your life. Have you ever been in the situation to where a loved one died and then other family members came in and fought and got into bitter battles and never spoke again over inheritance? Not really concerned about the person that passed? I've seen it in my life. And the love of many shall wax cold because of that sin, that greed. But this is not the best part. But he that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. Guys, if you look at it in the Greek, it's more properly translated, the same shall be kept safe. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Guys, this is getting to a major point. Listen to me. Don't read over this lightly. All right, we got the gospel going to be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come fast. It's going to be coming very quickly at that point. But we're already going to see the wars and rumors of wars and pestilence and famines. These are the tri tribulations of man, not the wrath of God. So what happens after Matthew twenty four fourteen? in the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world? For a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Just like the trumpets, the trumpets of battle, trumpets in Revelation. When it starts, it's going to come very quickly. It says, When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Who, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Now we're getting to the meat of this video. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of the house, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Guys, never forget Matthew twenty four nineteen that I just read you. Why would it be woe unto them that are with child? And to them that give suck in those days. We're going to get to that. For th but pray ye that your flight not be in the winter. Neither on the Sabbath day. Two keys to this day. Sabbath and a winter day. But listen. For then shall be great tribulation. Such as was not seen since the beginning of the world to this time. Nor shall ever be. Why instantly. God has had enough. Jesus Christ is coming, and as soon as that desol abomination of desolation stands up, it's gonna, all hell is going to break loose. Again, just stay with me here, guys. Except those days should be short, and there should be no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be sh shortened. The election, guys, the chosen ones, the ones that stood and fought. Did they also fight when Satan gathered a third of the angels? And when against God, what did the other two-thirds do? Are they in the election? Think about it. It says, Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders. How is that going to happen? Who is going to be 
these false prophets? Who are going to who is going to be the locust army? In so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Guys, it is not possible. And if it were, is what it says. But it is not. The election know what's coming. And it's their job to let everyone else know it. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it or not. Why? Because he's coming in the sky with a cloud of witnesses after his sign is shown and the nations tremble. For as the lightning coming out, out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For whoever, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will be angels, be to, uh, the eagles be gathered together, the vultures. Because when this happens and that great earthquake happens, there's going to be a great change in the twinkling of an eye. When this election is gathered from the four corners of the planet, but it gets better. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, guys, so this is the tribulation of man. We haven't seen Christ yet. Listen, he says, the sun shall be darkened. This is getting to the meat of the message. And the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. What are they talking about? Let me show you something. Many people say this is an asteroid shower, comets hitting the planet. No, it's much deeper than that. And it's got to do with those that are give suck in the end times. Or with child. These stars are not asteroids. I don't care what anybody tells you. They're not falling stars. They're not a meteor shower. Three times in Job 38, Revelation 9, and Revelation 120, these stars are angels, messengers. When the morning stars in Job 38 sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, remember Revelation 9, 1. This is very important. The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, not an asteroid, and to him, him, was given the key to the bottomless pit. This is Apollyon. It is a, a angel that has fallen. And in Revelation one twenty, the mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The seven candlesticks, which thou sawest, are the seven churches. All three of these relate to messengers. Some good, some bad. Now back to Matthew for a moment. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Guys, this is it. Pay attention. What has just fallen from heaven? And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of the trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. This is the gathering together. It is after the tribulation. But again, guys, you know that message. The message I'm talking about is who is falling from heaven. Why? Or you should you not be giving suck? Why you should you not be with child? Let's continue. I'm going to skip down to 24, 36 for time, guys. You, it's just a couple of verses there. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as in the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of son of man be. What is he talking about? For as in those days there were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Who was? The fallen angels, guys. And that's where the giants came from. And the other tribes that were, there was always a battle. That is why when God saw this, this pollution of his seed, the floods came. Why is Christ bringing that up again with these these falling stars? Drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. Why were they doing it then? Why will they be doing it this time? 
Okay. Look at the real scenario here, guys. We've got all the wars and rumors of war starting to come in. Famine. False prophets. The locust army. And what happens during that time? The, fa the fallen angels return. They deceive mankind. They deceive the women into marrying and giving in marriage. Why does he say, don't be impregnated at that time? Don't be giving suck. Don't be with child. Why? What happened then? The giants were born. And it has a spiritual uh, meaning also. Are you in bed with the lies of Satan? With, are you impregnated in that false spiritual doctrine? But it also is physical. So we're going to see a reintroduction of the fallen angels. And they may, people may want to call them ETs, whatever they want, saviors, false messiahs, whatever. This is what Christ is talking about. Woe unto those that get, get sucked in those days. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man be. These angels will be here. There will be a second, another influx. What, we, what a lot of people want to know is how will that appear? And you, people talk about the great alien Messiah, the deception coming. Will that be part of the plan? But it, who knows for sure? But you better understand what Christ was saying. There's a, another influx of the fallen angels, and they're going to be drinking and eating and marrying and giving in marriage. And woe to those that are with child and giving suck in those days. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. We don't know the hour and time, but we know the signs of the end times. And guys, if you don't think they're talking about fallen angels or possibly um, what will be called extraterrestrial life, false messiah, the great savior coming, Christ said it. Many shall come in my name before me. Who are these many? Who are the great and renowned men? They're coming back. It's a heads up, guys. Don't let some preacher steer you away from the truth of these letters in red. He's telling us what's happening. And many people have talked about this for a long time. But here it is. And guys, uh, this is just a drop in the bucket. Read this. Study it. Let me just end with the last couple of verses. It says, Therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh that day. Who then is faithful and wise, or who is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his house, household to give them meat in due season? Meat is food, guys. If you look at the Hebrew word, it's not flesh. And when King David sat down to meat, do you know that that word in Hebrew was raisin bread? It's the, the ruler of his household that has prepared not only physically, to feed his family in this due season. He has studied the word of the Lord to give them the spiritual meat also. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Think about it. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. Guys, when we just read, we don't know when he's coming. And shall begin to smite his fellow servants to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that ser servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him. And in an hour that he is not aware of. And shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Guys, that could be just a heart attack. When you're partying, eating, or drinking, whatever. Not looking. Take you down before you have time to redeem yourself. Think about what I'm telling you. You think the Bible doesn't talk about these fallen angels and what's coming upon this planet? You're wrong. You can argue with these words in red all you want to, guys. But for those that have eyes to see and ears to hear, I hope this is a message. Um, 
It's a heads up, guys. Be safe.